Out here rapping, what we better sí, do? Yes, we're representing the Peluqueria Ejecutiva. For my non Spanish speaking people, what for, we better do? We're about to do a little demo, step by step haircut at Clarendon College. My boy Nico's about to get down. We're Let's all gonna throw in a, a couple nuggets of knowledge out there. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. This is the owner Xavier. Hi. He also works with us. And his name is Carlos Garcia. And today we're just gonna be doing a, a low fade. What's one thing that you guys struggle with? Fades. 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 Yeah. So what what's the biggest uh, the biggest thing with the fade that you, you think that you struggle with? Measurements? Okay. Blending? Not the right one. What's that? <laughs> So uh, most of the time when you guys fade, do you guys go down to bald, or is it more like with starting with a, a smaller guard? Okay, we'll do a bald fade today, and then you can see kind of a, a technique. How long have you been a barber? I've been licensed since this month. It'll be three years. So very, this is a very fruitful career field. Um, a lot of people I hear talk smack about it and stuff like that, but there's a lot of money if you if you do it the right way, if you're good to your clients, if you uh, cater to them and take care of them. I mean, at the same time, there's a balance between taking care of your clients and also remembering yourself. But once you find that balance is when you'll really excel in this career field. First thing I'm gonna do, he just got a design, so we'll try to get this out. But the first thing we're gonna do is make our first guideline. And uh, I'm gonna take it from about where the eye is at, and I'm gonna kinda of go up and then drop it down back. And we're gonna go completely bald. What is uh, the first thing that you did to your clipper? Oh, the first thing I did was uh, <coughs> use Cool Care, that clipper side by Oster. Basically, it just uh, cl uh, lubricates and cleanses your blade, sanitizes it before you use it on your client. So this is the type of guideline that I'm talking about. <coughs> So by doing so, and you drop it down, you'll have more room to fade up and you'll keep a lot more bulk around the rib. And I'll just do one side real quick so we can go over this side. And if anybody has questions, you know, shoot them out. I'm down to answer whatever you have to ask. It's gonna be very interactive. I'm not gonna try to talk the whole time. I'd, I'd like some, some things that you guys struggle with or have questions about anything. Come on, girl. Not all at once. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Do you guys um, allow for like, like students like uh, to go like shadow yoga or anything like that? Or um, that's been a you know a, a question a lot, and you know we're completely down with that. Yeah. But the biggest thing is we want people to actually be passionate about it, not right. just come and, and and not really partake and want to learn because there's a lot of people that say they want to do stuff. Right. But you know if you have a passion for it, you know that that we would we highly encourage that. Can y'all see the difference, the line of demarcation right here? Yeah. All right, so what I did is I have my lever all the way open, and that's where we're gonna make another panel of hair to fade. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take it up like maybe a quarter inch, three quarters of an inch, and I took it up all the way, all the way around. And then once you do that, I'm gonna close the lever back up, and I'm gonna open it just a little bit, and we're just gonna start etching this line all the way up so for it to be faded. So if you see, I'm, every time I, I go up a little bit, I'm opening that lever just a little bit more. And we're gonna take it all the way up till the lever is completely open. And that should get us where we need to be at. So as you can see, it's not as heavy now. But there's still, I still see little, little spots where it's not. So with that, you're gonna just work with your lever and you're gonna use like the first two or three teeth on the blade. And if you use your corner and you tilt it, you can get this knocked out just using those first corners of the teeth. So I tried to teach them that last week, and they were like, "Why are we using that? Like this, use a corner." So, yeah. Because I said she remembered. <laughs> she remembered though. She looked at me and she's like. Shh. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the corner stuff is just mainly detail, like. Yeah. A lot of times barbers or you know hair cutters they get lost because they're trying to use the whole blade on every part of the head when it's not necessary 
sometimes it just makes you take your fade higher, your guideline higher, and at the end of it, you end up doing like a mohawk fade. Yeah. <laughs> a way to look at it is, uh, how many of y'all know a point guard? All right, so you're, you're going in, you have your hair, and you're going in like this. So essentially, when you use that corner, and you're going at an angle, that's what you're doing is point cut. What I did with the no guard is I had the lever open, I went up and made my panel of hair. So now, since we faded all that no guard, we go to the next guard, which is gonna be our half guard. And then we're gonna make another panel of hair to fade. So just like I did the, uh, the no guard, lever open, I went up just a little bit. That's what we're doing right here. And I'm just keeping that, that, that curved shape we have dropping down. Uh, so like when I do a haircut, what I'll usually do is I'll do one side and then I'll do the opposite side and then I'll bridge it together and, and make sure that it all flows together. Like time management, you know, uh, for me, this works fast. So now I have my one guard and I'm gonna take my one guard, just like we did the half guard open, take my one guard open and make another panel of hair to, to fade up. Cause you see, he's just making, you know, lines on top of other <laughs> lines and just going from shorter to longer, you know, after that, the one and a half, and really like there's barbers that just use up to a one and a half guard, some use up to a two and then just clipper over comb or, you know, thinning shears over comb. Everybody has different techniques. I mean, unless you practice different stuff, you're never really gonna know what works best for you. Uh, I mean, experience and practice, you know, that's the only thing that's gonna help. I mean, of course, constantly watching, you know, taking classes, YouTube, you know, YouTube helps with everything, you know, anything you wanna learn, YouTube helps. And there's so many people making videos uh, my coworker here, he has his own channel on YouTube where he does step-by-step -step haircuts as well. I mean, y'all can follow him. Uh, it's under Jay Blends. Jay Blends. Jay Blends. And I mean, he has different haircuts. You know, he has haircut tapers, you know, fades, you know. Yeah, you know. That's what's up. Yeah, he, ha he has really good content. So if everybody could subscribe, that'd be dope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get to 1,000 right now. I'm at 754, I think. We got that all faded out. And how many people struggle with, like, dips in the head? Like where it looks darker in that area than, than most of the other haircut. All right, so with that, when you take your guard to an area that has a dip, what you wanna do is use your corners, the corner of the blade, and get in there to get that, that area faded out. Because if you think about it, if you have like a dip in the head and you have your guard and you're going straight up, this is how you're missing all the hair that's in there. So if you use your corner, you're getting inside the dip. Now all this hair that's right here overhanging, I'm gonna take a one guard. So the last guard we used was the one and a half open. And I faded that all up. So now I'm gonna keep my the bottom of my comb beveled towards the area where we had that one and a half. And I'm gonna use my one. So that's gonna give us slightly over a one, of a, one and a half guard. <laughs> now I have that one and a half and I, I'm going up and I'm kind of just going straight up, not digging into where we faded. And we're just getting that all like, all these lines right here taken out. All the way down the back over here. I know you can't really see the back, but it, it looks faded too, promise me. <laughs> <laughs> Vertically, instead of horizontally. And I'll just uh, keep it straight up and then take the guard up and then it'll, it'll all fall and then That'll basically get a lot of your bulk blended, and from there you can kind of detail whatever is left. He was a school guy, so I always told him he should be an instructor. <laughs> to ask him why. why? I don't know why, because... Because he already <laughs> knew it all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He knew a lot, guys, and um, he explains everything. So whenever I needed help with the guy's haircut, and I was really busy because we were always busy, with walk-ins, um, he would assist me, like he would go over there and show them because I know he was really good at it. So he'd go over there and teach the student a little bit of what he knew. But he's been doing this for years without a license. So when he got his license, he got even better at it. So how I started was like, when I was in the military, I would just chop people up in the barracks. The barracks is just a, a centralized location where they house everybody. So I had a bunch of roommates and friends and stuff like that. I charged them like five bucks a cut. And that's how I started cutting from there. And then when I got out of the military, I was like, well, I'm gonna try to make this happen. And it's pretty cool to make it happen. But you know, it's, it's a blessing and it's like humbling to hear her say that I was good then because I look at old pictures from when I was in school and 
they do not even compare it to like stuff that I take pictures of now. It's pretty crazy. But I mean, that just shows you if you have a passion and you, you work hard, you can make things happen. get my uh, my trimmers and we're gonna edge this up now for the hairline that we're about to edge up I, I like to use a spritz to harden the hair that way you can keep it in place when you're edging it up and it's not just going all over the place look at that teaching you <laughs> and then just apply a little bit of heat and just get that dried up and comb the hair down to where you're gonna be edging it up do is we're gonna we're gonna try to keep this as natural as you can yeah a lot of times perfecting your edge up will make your fade stand out that much more as well it's like putting a, a frame on a picture like the picture could look dope but when you add that little frame to it it maximizes it it the nice potential thing. one thing i've noticed that in this industry and in hair is the ego there is so much ego people backbiting each other and honestly, like, they'll be like, oh, do you know about this barber over here? I'm like, I really don't. Like, because honestly, I keep to my little family. And that's really, that, that's all it is. I've been at the same shop. And I pride myself on this because there's a lot of people who shop hop. I've been at one shop since I graduated. And that is how I built my clientele is you, you stay consistent and you stay in one spot where people can find you. I listen to my clients. I listen to what they complain about another barber. And I'll tweak all what I do to everything that they complain about. So if I hear somebody be like, oh, so-and-so is always late. He shows up late to my appointment every time. I am on time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I set all my appointments like 45 minute windows. So that's just enough time for me to get the service done, get cleaned up, get ready for the next service. People I realize don't really respect time. And so you have to train your clients to work with you. And because a lot of times people are just like, oh, well, so-and-so was always 15 minutes late. So I figured if I was 15 minutes late to you, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But you have to make people realize how you operate and then you guys can, you know, mesh well together. But I got a funny story about the hairline thing. So he, he came like all the time. And uh, this one time he wanted to be picky. He's like, hey, just don't push me back, man. You pushed me back last time. My friends were roasting me when I went to Dallas. I was like, bet, all right. I'm a very sarcastic person. So I, his edge up in the front was just, it was like doing the wave. So I took my trimmer and I went with his hairline, just how he said, leave it natural. Yeah. And I said, is this good, bro? And he's like, he looks at me, he's like, now nah, you push it back, bro. <laughs> no matter how good you are, I feel like it takes like maximum at least three services to really get that client's head down. It all, it, like you can't get it right off the bat no matter how good you are I really truly don't believe that you can get it right off the bat because there's so many if somebody comes in with a bushy head and then you don't know it may take you a little bit more time with new clients so for myself anytime I have a new client this might sound weird but I stalk their Facebook just to see what type of hair they rock <laughs> and, the and just to see what I'm working with and see how much time I need to give that client and that I mean that's just something that helps me out with time management a lot of times clients two guy clients you know, you'll ask them, do you want your mustache trimmed? A lot of times you gotta kinda look what they already have. Like, obviously if they have a super thick mustache, you're not gonna do a drastic change like that. And that's why it's always just good to ask, like, are, are, are you wanting to keep it pretty thick and bulky still? Are you wanting something a little bit tighter? It's just always good to just ask questions. I'm sure you guys have been taught, you know, educate your client on how to take care of whatever it is you did to them. Like if you, if you, um, put color enhancement in, in their hair or some type of color, you, you you educate them on how to take care of it for it to last long and still be quality. And that's something that we always have to do because I mean, people will get a haircut and then they don't know how to style it or they don't know what product we use. So that'll help you out to sell product as well. You style their hair, show them how to do it. Then they're gonna be like, oh, what did you use? So then from there, you know, you can sell them something.
Like my boss, he sells a lot of suavecito to people because they have comb overs and stuff like that. Never think that you're you're above anything or you're you you've learned it all. You haven't. And that's like for, for us, we just went to a class last weekend, like just to learn more. You know, some of the stuff we already knew, but when you get around a bunch of like-minded individuals, people who are eager to learn something else, that's a good mindset to be in. You don't ever want to be so arrogant or so full of yourself that you don't think, oh, there's nothing else I could really learn. Cause that's a bad place to be at. <laughs> a lot of times clients will like try to help you out. They'll try to move their head some way or like they'll try to adjust their neck the way that they think you want it. For me, you politely tell your client how you want them to be. You know, you don't like jerk their head or be rude, but you <laughs> politely tell them how you want, want them to be and how it will work for you and how to help you out. And the reason why I have his head just straight up is because it'll help me see what's, uh, what's level. So another term, that you know you hear in, in cosmetology is a asymmetrical you want both sides of your head to be symmetric any other questions nobody's curious about anything have you ever used the feather blade so it's like the razor or the blade but it has a guard on it yeah well i mean personally i've never used it but there's ways that that would come in handy with the guard on there like if you have like a lot of bulk on the top, like you see a lot of guys nowadays have like super long hair, but they want to edge up in the front mm -hmm. and you see all the flyaways and stuff like that. If you take that feather razor and just glide the top of it, like all these flyaways right here, you could even that all out. So that in that instance, it would work for barbering. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to add uh, another popular haircut is like crop tops where you have heavy texture on the top with like a low fade. Yeah. You could use the feather razor to texture. I'll just put the card down. If you can see, can everybody see where the beard is at? Mm -hmm. Where the, the natural line is at? Alright. Lightly coated. The biggest thing with color enhancement is I've learned to show the client the haircut before I do anything with enhancement. That way they can see the product and what you already did and that it's, it's, it's good. that mindset to just put my all into my craft is when my clientele started to build a lot more and it was tough like turning down a ninety thousand dollar contract in afghanistan but your mental stability and doing something that you love on a daily basis is what makes this worthwhile you know i can't imagine punching a clock every day so for me i really like to cater to my clients and try to be there to to get them you know fresh for whatever function they're trying to get to and that that's the biggest thing is it's you and your clients is a relationship that you're building it's not just somebody that you know is coming to get a haircut i have a kid client that i have i've been cutting him since he was still wearing diapers and now he's over here talking about girls getting fresh and stuff like that I'm just saying, <laughs> like it's crazy the type of relationship you build with people uh earlier he said that the back portion he feels is the most important part of the haircut sometimes people will do a haircut the sides will look super blurry Nicely faded, blended, you can see barely any lines, hopefully no lines. But when they get to the back, you'll start seeing like, yeah, blocking in the back. But the best way to do that is to stretch the skin, like around the occipital bone, and make sure you get all that blend in there. And when you spread, like when you make your guidelines in the back, if you make them a little larger than the side, you'll have more room to fade that up, and you'll have a, a, a smoother fade in the back. Man, we're 
What's good, everybody? Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got some type of knowledge, nuggets out of the uh, little seminar that me and my boss taught. Uh, it was a really humbling experience to just go there and teach a bunch of hungry, eager minds, people who are, you know, hungry for more knowledge, for more technique, hungry for more, you know, hands-on application in the real world of uh, hair, you know, whether it be cosmetology, barbering, or so forth. But it, it was just a great experience overall. Uh, I appreciate Clarendon College for allowing us to go and do that, for just allowing us to go and give whatever information that we have um, and just to spread that 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 knowledge that we that we can impart on other people but like I said I hope that you got some type of nuggets out of it and I hope that it will help you out you know in your barbering career or your, your hair cutting or whatever you may be doing you maybe you're chopping in a shop maybe you're chopping in the garage but you know hopefully some of this helps you out and gives you a little bit more information that you can add to your arsenal I just truly appreciate everybody who is subscribed to the channel. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button. If you are subscribed to the channel and you vibe with the channel, share my content, share my videos, it's all free knowledge. We're about to be hitting a thousand subscribers here pretty soon. Right now, uh, I'm at 771, so we're about to hit that 800 mark. A thousand will be here in no time. I will be doing a 1K giveaway. I'm not too sure exactly what I have in mind yet, um, but just stay tuned. We got more videos, more content to come. I got another haircut tutorial in the chamber. Going to be dropping here pretty soon. So stay tuned. Like I said, I appreciate all y'all. Until next time, peace.